Asitar Karim. Good afternoon, Tamara. How are you? I'm fine. How about yourself? Are you fine? It's a pleasure uh, having you with us. Uh, just a second to stop the music. Um, yeah, it's, it's a real pleasure having you today, um, Professor Cario, for everybody, my colleagues here, uh, juniors and seniors are attending and looking forward to this uh, lecture. Uh, professor Cario was my professor at uh, World Maritime University uh, many years ago <laughs> uh, during my master's degree, and uh, it was a real pleasure getting to know him. And today he was so kind to um, uh, accept our invitation to give us uh, this uh, seminar about the publishing process. Uh, I will let Professor Cario introduce himself and carry on with the, uh, with the seminar. Go ahead, Professor, thank you. All right, thanks, uh, thanks to you, Sunrise 3. A great uh, pleasure for me to be with you. Um, I I'm not sure about how many participants is there. Uh, till now, we have 25 and counting. More are uh, joining us. Okay, great. So that's, uh, that's good. Just give me a second. I'm going to close my window. Okay, sure. All right. So once again, very happy to be um, very happy to be here with you. Very happy to uh, to share some of my uh, strategies when it comes to publication because I guess that's, uh, that's the main topic of uh, uh, today's seminar. And if I, I'm right, we have uh, one hour, one and a half maximum, is it? We have up to two, as you like. Okay, all right. So, so let, let's start. The, the, the idea, when uh, Sandra uh, kindly asked me to, uh, you know, to talk with you, uh, was to share some of my uh, experience in uh, publication, through publications. Uh, my, my background is an economist, so some of you might also be economists, some might be more in a, a management, I don't know, maybe some more on a technical background, I would say. But, but my, my idea was to uh, share with you some, uh, some tips, some things that has worked for me, okay, but also uh, some mistake uh, I did, and uh, to have that more as an exchange about your practices and about what uh, seems to have been uh, working for me. Uh, I've been into research from the beginning. I started my uh, career as a professor of economics at the University of Nantes, which is in France. And uh, after that, I moved to, um, uh, to the World Maritime University in Sweden. Okay, uh, this was for six years. Uh, and I had a chance to, uh, to meet uh, San Sandra at this time uh, in Sweden. And after uh, seven years, so it was uh, 10 years ago now, I went back to a business school. So may maybe what could be of interest uh, with you uh, is also I will share if you uh, want to know more about the different perspectives. You know, doing research at a university, doing research at the more uh, maritime applied universities, and then in a business school. And this is also something I think which is important to, uh, uh, to take into consideration. Uh, the way I wanted to uh, structure it, if you're okay with that, Sandra, was more to, uh, there is no presentation, just uh, I wrote some things, some elements to share with you. So I don't know, for 20, half an hour. Uh, obviously you can stop me at uh, any time if you have uh, any uh, question. And uh, we can then open the floor and have a general discussion about something that uh, may need a clarification, okay? Or uh, some element I didn't uh, touch upon. Is it, is it fine with you? Can you hear me well? Yes, and uh, you, you, you are co-host now, so you can share your screen or whatever you want to show us. All right, so maybe later I will show you the list of, uh, you know, target journals and uh, and yes. so if you, if you want to, uh, uh, to go into these uh, uh, specifics. So uh, share my experience. Obviously in publication, 
uh, it depends a lot about who you are. You know, if you are a young researcher, if you're more senior, your uh, target, your strategy or strategies when it comes to publication is not going to be uh, at all the same. And I, I don't have the list here, but I suspect that some are more young researchers, I guess, and some are more senior. Yes, we have both uh, okay. senior and junior researchers. All right. So, so some are, are as experienced, I would say, uh, as I am. So it would be obvious for some of you, uh, maybe more relevant for young, uh, young researchers. And I, I will target young researchers. I think yes. it's a, a, some mistake yes. uh, not to make. So publishing, publication, the process. Uh, I think we all agree that it's both uh, rewarding. We all love to do research and it's very rewarding when you get your paper published, you got the final uh, acceptance, but it can be also very painful. So this is something I, I will start with. And it's very often uh, uh, very painful. You have to be ready for that, but you have also to be aware, this is more for the young researchers, huh? but we have all been, almost every, everyone has been through, through the process of uh, having paper rejected, you know, having some anger about it, not being happy about it, being mad at the referees, being mad at the editors, okay? And this is something that you will have uh, through uh, all your careers, okay? More or less, the more senior you are, very often the more higher journal you will target. But each time you go one step higher, you, you feel sometimes you're starting from the, the beginning again. So first of all, uh, a wonderful experience, but very, very uh, sometimes painful, but it's part of the game, okay? Which means that it's very rare that your paper will go through, I mean, very smoothly, you know, if you target a good journal, uh, for submission to publication. To tell the truth, uh, it has happened to me only once, okay, in all my career. And actually, this could be a good sign, but I, I, I'm fully aware it's, it's not going to happen often, uh, but has been my most impactful paper. It was the right paper at the right time, you know, and timing is also very important. It was something, so I'm, I'm specialized in uh, maritime economics, to have something about slow steaming, you know, which is a reduction of the speed of the vessel. I've been working two years about it. And when I just submitted, it was just high on the agenda. So then it went directly through publication, but it's very, very rare. Uh, so to help that, you need to keep in mind and that uh, even myself, very often I try to remember that because I'm also reviewing a lot of papers that, okay, the referee, editor, usually are your friends, okay? They are here to uh, help. Very often when I go for a review, a paper has been uh, uh, either rejected or uh, my first reaction is uh, I, I just wanted to quit the <laughs> academic world, <laughs> okay? And then you go back two or three days later, you read it again and you realize that maybe it's not so difficult, you know, to answer the referees. And very often, okay, um, there are some good ad advices. So they are here to help. And you have also to, uh, to understand, and this is, uh, but they are also kind because as I mentioned before, to do the referee is very often some, some something we will do uh, after work hours. My, my job is to do some research. My job is to do some teaching. And I also do referring, you know, for free. So uh, you have to be uh, clear about that, okay? But they are here to help. And very often when you step back, you realize that what they're going to tell you, okay, is once again, very often that your paper is not clear. Okay, and the fact that the paper is not clear is very often not because they didn't spend too much time to read it, because it was very hard to read. So that's the, the main reason why I would say a paper uh, is going to be uh, rejected. So how does it work, starting with that? First, with 
one question. I don't know if you have the same question than me, uh, which is first uh, targeting the right journal. Okay. And that's something which is also uh, extremely difficult. Okay. Uh, first of all, you have to, I would say, think about the scope of the paper. Okay. Which is to say, you have always to think about who you want to read or you want to write for. Okay. That's the first thing. So I, I would tell you through uh, ways of uh, deal with that. But the first question you, for me, uh, you have to, to think about is who do I want to, to write for? And here you have many people you want to address, but usually there are two main streams, in my view. This is the way I look at it. There are some papers that sometimes I write for my colleagues, for other people in the academia. Okay. And what do people sometimes or often look, okay, is either a new method that can be easily applied. Okay. When, when I do my reviews, usually this is what I'm looking for. Doesn't matter so much about the application, but what I'm looking for very often is to say, reading this paper, it made me think about a new method that I can use. Okay. And if uh, I write this kind of paper, okay, I will maybe come back to that. The way I'm going to write it is totally different than the other main target, which are policymakers and practitioners. Okay. This time when I read this paper, I, I don't, me, I don't mind too much about the methods. See who you want to write to. Okay. So when I read a paper which is more about policy or practitioners, I want to learn new ways of doing things, new way to solve the issue, a policy issue, okay? To find new solutions. It means what? It means that even on the same uh, topic, obviously, but you, have, you can have two completely different ways to write the paper. One would be more technical, I'm going to address my colleagues and I'm going to make a contribution to methodology, okay, to the method. The other one, I'm more going to write for policymakers, practitioners, I'm going to try to solve an issue. Okay. And I think this is uh, something which is, I don't know if you feel the same, but I think this is something extremely important. And it, from my experience, most of the time, uh, my papers are or were rejected because I didn't match the right journal with the right audience, which is I want to go into a paper or journal which is mostly about the methodology to solve a practical issue. And that doesn't match. Okay. Or uh, target a journal, and we all have our own journals, we know who, which we're talking about, but I target a journal which is more about practical to solve issues. And then within this paper, there was five pages of, five pages of equations. It doesn't match. This is not the right uh, target. So once, or even if this is Easy to uh, easier to save and to uh, you know to do okay uh, it's still not easy and this is where I wanted to uh, briefly mention uh, also where are you conducting the research okay uh, I I would say I'm more a practitioner okay I'm more in the second field which means I want to solve a problem okay. Uh, I'm not uh, working on econometrics. I'm not working on uh, operation research. Okay. Uh, so it means that there are some journal where I should, I would say, automatically target my, uh, my publications. Okay. So in my field, 
is going to be transportation research part D, which is about uh, uh, economics, transport, and the environment. Uh, transportation research part uh, uh, E, which is logistics. Okay. Transportation research part A, policy. So naturally, I, I should target always this journal. And I will have a higher I mean, chance to be published. That's my top journals in my field. Okay. Why, why do I say that it's not, um, it's not easy? Because I, I, I think Sandra mentioned briefly uh, uh, about the fact that I guess you have your own publication list. Uh, yeah, we mainly the, the Q journals are the ones that are indexed by Scopus and Web of Science and the Qs on uh, Scopus and Web of Science. These are the ones that we recommend our, the, our university to publish okay. in. Uh, I guess, for example, like the International uh, Journal for Logistics Management, well, a Q2 Logistics Journal, for example, also transportation, yeah, a, a, D, Part D and Part A, they are all on the Q1 and Q2. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. yeah. yeah so be. yes, the, these are also our target journals, yes. Okay. So wh why do I mention, because in your career, and this is more for, uh, uh, this is something which is um, to keep in mind, you might move from one institution to another. And this is something that makes our life sometimes difficult. When, when I, I left the University of Nantes, the Faculty of Economics, obviously the target was on uh, economic journals. Okay, when I moved to WMU, okay, they were not so much research oriented, let's put it this way. Okay, so it means that publication were important, but not as much. And then I went to a business school when there was another target, which means that this makes things not easy for us, you know, because according to where you are, they are going to ask you to target different journals and, and it takes time. It's, it's a lot about the writing skills, but it takes a lot of time to understand how to write to a specific journal. And it takes a lot of time to understand actually uh, what, um, what they want from you, you know, with kind of audience. So I will go uh, in a few minutes about that, about how do I, you know, work and especially the mistake not to make. And this is, in my view, uh, general to any journal. If your target is a journal, I'm going to give you the advice I never followed. Okay. But that somebody told me, uh, I'm going to go to a sabbatical in a Cornell, which is a very big university. And they really are on the top, you know, top 10 US. Uh, so their way to do it, to deal with it, you can do it if you want, is to say, I select first the journal. That's the first way to do it. So I select a journal. I look at, because that's a priority for my career. Okay. I need to publish in this, uh, for me, it's International, International Journal of Production Economics, which is a very good journal in, in my uh, school, for instance. So I target the journal. And then I look at the conversation going on around the topic and I write my article for this journal, for this topic. This is something usually we don't do. I don't do. I don't know about yourself. Okay. But you journal first. That can be good for a junior. Okay. Uh, and you look for what we call incremental contribution, which means you, you're not going to challenge everything. Okay. Because you know the referees, the people, are comfortable with this method, this, this way of doing things. Instead, what you do is you, you, you look at a topic which is uh, uh, of interest to you, on which you feel you can contribute, and more or less, you find just a small area where you can make a difference. Then when we, you will reach this journal, of, obviously it will be clear for the editor, it will be clear for the reference. Okay. So this is one way of, of doing it, once again, which is if you want to publish in a very good journal and you don't have any experience, read only this journal, read what they are talking about, 
look at what's hot, you know, topics, and then write something about it. Obviously, you have more chance that if you come with your own, I would say, uh, a domain, and why it's going to be very difficult to enter. Okay. Now, the other uh, way is to start with a topic. And we all do that, I guess, because it was your PhD and you know better than uh, most people on, on earth, you know, about this topic. And then afterwards you select the journal. Okay. Here, the only mistake I've, I've found, and I'm, I'm still making the mistake myself, quite often, you know, is that you write the paper, then you look at one journal where you want to publish and you try to make the link. And then it doesn't, it's hard. For me, it's, the writing is hard because it was not written with this purpose. And very often I get a desk rejection, to tell the truth. There is a lot of desk rejection now, okay? So the more natural way to do it is you do your, your research, you, and then you do your literature review, and then you look at your literature review. If you have, I, I don't know, three, four, five papers that you quoted, which are from a given journal, then you should go for this journal, okay? Why? Because at the end, what is your objective? Depend on your career. Beginning of the career is to publish in good journal. A little later, I hope I'm at, I'm at uh, this stage now. It's not only about that, it's mostly about having an impact. And if you want to have an impact, but you have to publish in a community for which it makes sense, very often. So it's natural to go into uh, this uh, uh, journal. So this, this is where I wanted to start with, to tell you about the, the process, okay? About the journal uh, selection. And uh, maybe I should give you some time, so maybe if there is any questions, or should I continue with a general cons consideration and, and we keep all the questions or exchanges by the end? Uh, does anyone have questions who wants to ask now about the selection of the journals and so on? If not, then we keep them till the end, yes, okay. Professor. Okay, so these are some general uh, rules. Now I'm going to come to more specific rules, but I, I try to, uh, not always, but very often to, um, uh, to use. The next step is to sell the paper, okay? It's not because you have a great idea, but it's going to be enough. You need to get a good idea. You need to be, have obviously a solid, uh, you know, references and so on, but it's also about how you're going to uh, sell the idea, okay? So to sell the idea, me as a referee, and I could see that from my experience, huh, uh, mistake not to make, I would say, okay? And that I find time to time, usually you see it's more for a junior sometimes, but not only, huh, is to say, um, I'm writing on this topic because there is no, no existing research on this topic or because nobody, you know, the, the idea of research gap, nobody wrote about it, okay? Uh, for me, this is to avoid. Why? Because the first reaction, uh, for me as a reviewer, we give a bad impression, okay? Uh, in a sense that for me, it means that either there is nobody writing about it because it's not a good idea, you know? And sometimes I've also been trapped, you know, myself about this. Sometimes you, 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 you feel about a problem, but after a while you realize it's only in your head. There's no problem. But you, you continue convincing yourself, you know, that there is something, but there is nothing, okay? And I would say very often the reviewer will uh, look at that thinking, okay, either it's not such a great idea, or second of all, uh, didn't spend enough time on the literature review. Because it, today it's hard to convince people that what you want to work on, nobody has never worked on. So I would say, instead, uh, not, not to make, 
uh, sells the idea that your paper needs to be uh, read because nobody never thought about it. Okay, you're going to contribute to something that usually already uh, exists. Second thing, once you have, and this should be, I would say, uh, one third in the process. Once you have your idea about the journal, spend some time to read the articles, the abstract, sorry, okay? Make sure once again, that you read the abstract and look at how they structures, you know? So you look the journal you target, International Journal of uh, Logistic Management or whatever, and you look at the abstract. You should stick as much as possible as a standard abstract. Why? Because this is what the editor, you know, mostly is going to base his decision on desk reject or not. And this is also the first impression that you will give to the referee. So the abstract and the title is probably uh, something I always spend at least one week, just on the title, just on the abstract. It has to be in line with what you expect from this kind of journal. So once again, doesn't necessarily have to be exactly in your field, but you, you take 20 abstracts and you look at how they structure the abstract. And once you find a structure, which match what you want, more or less use the same structure. Because then, once again, the editor will feel uh, largely uh, uh, confident about that. Third thing, as I mentioned before, I already mentioned, uh, know your audience. What you should avoid today, once again, I'm telling you it's my experience, okay? So I don't want you to uh, come back to me to tell, oh, I follow your advice, <laughs> it didn't work, you know? But my, I'm here to share my experience, okay? Uh, more and more, we are lazy as a referee. I receive, I don't know about uh, you, Sandra, today, or some of your senior colleagues here. Me, I think I receive one request for review every day. Every single day, there's a journal asking me. And usually I, I'm capable of accepting one per week, okay? So it's not only about being lazy, it's also about there is a huge competition. So it's all the time you receive some. It means what? It means that once again, when I was thinking about the target, okay, you have to be clear, okay? Who do you want to write? As soon as I see, for instance, myself, a contribution which is more on the methodological aspect, okay, it's clear. I will say no, okay? I will say no, I'm not, uh, you know, it's not my, my thing, but I'm clear, you know. Uh, as soon as something which is more practical, of course, there is some uh, theory behind and uh, mathematics. It's not a question of mathematics or not, you know. It's where is the contribution. Uh, I'm more inclined to say yes. But it has to be clear from the abstract. Why am I telling you? Because the worst thing that you can happen to you is to get your paper reviewed by something like me, you know, and because from the abstract, I say yes. And then when I found out about the article, I found out that it's mostly about the methodology, which means I don't, it's very hard for me to write a review. So that's very bad, okay? So I would say you have to be in the abstract, okay? From the beginning, very clear. My contribution is to improve this model using this technique. Okay, it's about the methodology. Or my contribution is to solve this problem, political or uh, practitioners, okay? So you rephrase it according to your uh, domain of uh, research, but I think this is extremely important. You can obviously uh, decide to do uh, uh, one version which is more for policymakers, okay? one version which is more for uh, uh, practitioners, um, uh, for, for academia. But then, I say, if it's more for uh, uh, policy makers, uh, to solve a policy issue, then you have appendixes. Put all your equation in appendixes, okay? It's not the core of the paper. It has to be there, 
If it's solid, it's always good. It shows that it's, you know, but your paper is not written on the, you know, to challenge a model, to challenge the assumption. It's the use of your model to, to have a story. Okay. It means that you can see already that all, all these um, elements take a lot of time. So this is where you have also to, uh, to think about your research uh, agenda in terms of economies of scale. You know, it will take you a lot of time to get your, uh, uh, your project, to look at the literature, to look what you can do. So it means what? It means also that your topic or your research should at least give you the possibility to have two or three articles from it. It's not about repeating yourself, okay? But two or three different angles. Because this process of finding your contribution, understanding the needs, understanding the journals, you know, it's, it's very time consuming. So once again, think also about that to say, I have, it's not an article, I have a project to work on this domain. And from this project, I will try to get one, two or three articles. Okay. Because if you restart each time, especially at the beginning of your careers, it's a very long, long uh, uh, process. Okay. A uh, couple more uh, advices, and then I think it's more from the discussion where we can go into uh, uh, the writing. Writing is an art, okay? Some are very good in uh, uh, methodology, but they are incapable of writing, you know, in a simple way. So it means that it's very hard to understand. And if you want to go to a good journal, and if you want to improve yourself, it means that both aspect, method, and you know, writing should go together. Okay. So it means that this is where comes the question of uh, co-authorship. You know, should I do it myself, okay, or should I go with co-authors? Even if sometimes it's hard for a young researcher to accept it. Uh, at the beginning of your career, the best advice is to write with senior colleagues. Okay. Usually they have the experience. Okay. I know that I can take example of uh, some of, uh, of my articles. I don't know if you share the same experience, uh, Sandra or the colleagues, you know, and then I, I did all the work. I did my PhD and you feel like, okay. And then I went with this uh, PhD, uh, not my promoter, but big names. Okay. In the, academia and you feel like, oh, it, it didn't do much, you know, it didn't do much. I did all, all the work. I was, uh, I mean, without him, I would have never been able to publish. Uh, but then you realize, you know, 10, 20 years, maybe 10 years later is enough. Okay. Well, you realize it's not all, all, only about, but, but the perspective, the abstract, you know, the introduction, the literature review, uh, is uh, for me as important than the, the problem you want to solve. To put that in perspective, because then he was able to take what's important and what people want to, you know, get from it. So, in in my view, uh, it's always good to uh, uh, to write with somebody, especially at the beginning, okay, and to really rely on other people to help you to get your paper uh, published. Once again, sometimes you feel uh, frustrated about that, but you should not, okay? It's a win-win situation. It's helping you to, uh, to go through. A uh, few other tips I wanted to, uh, to share with you. Literature review. This is something which is also very important, okay? Me, when I read a paper, uh, I'm, I'm looking different things, but I, I can tell you, I, I've been, I told you I review paper, maybe, uh, I don't know how many per month and, uh, and I start to be, uh, old, I start to be tired of reviewing, you know, it takes time. It takes, uh, energy. And, and sometimes also you, because it's, uh, it's not easy, you know, to tell somebody, you know, your journal, you know, your article is so it's a little painful also for the referee to write something where you say, no, it's, it's not good enough. I mean, I know the feeling. 
uh, when I started my career, I received some review where more or less between the line, it was like, okay, no, it's crap. You will never make it, you know? So it's, it's you know, and you, you don't like to be in this position uh, either. But I would say when, when I look at paper, when I remember the, the paper, I, I, I really remember, because that's also what important, you know? But it was very often not, not only uh, because it was in my domain, because there is one stage where you, you know, it's difficult to surprise you when something you, you really know about. But sometimes I remember more some paper because of the literature review. Because something which is very important is also when you read somebody's paper, it gives you the will to work on this domain. So I'm going to give you an example, uh, TRD, you know, environment, a review, or maybe it was a TRA, whatever. It was a paper about the impact of um, hurricanes for ports in Florida. No, I, I, I really like it because the methodology was not fantastic, I would say. But first, it was the first time I could see something written on this subject. It's pretty easy to understand that impact of climate change on port, something that, which is relevant. Okay. But also because the, the literature review was wonderful. So this paper for me, I devoted uh, two weeks to write the review because I felt like it was going to give a, a big contribution to existing uh, research. And once again, it was new. And, and the, once again, the strength was the method is not perfect. It's something new, but it, it's well uh, structured. So what is well structured for literature review? Okay. Once again, I give you some tips. I try not always, but often to apply. It should never be a summary of article. Should never be this guy says that, this guy says that, this guy says that. It's usually it's very long and we don't like to read long literature review and we don't get much from it. Okay. So if you want to do, and this is very important and what I consider a nice return to review, you should find some uh, central themes, okay? To say, when I talk about this domain, there are three main themes, you know, three main questions. And then you present the literature according to these main uh, areas. So on this general area, this, and you don't talk about the method. We don't, once again, maybe, depends where you publish. If you're more in a methodological paper, okay, you will talk about the, but very often you are more a practitioner policy paper. So what I want to see is around this general question, these three main topics which have been covered. And for this topic, this author say this. And then another authors argue that this was the contrary. And then another one, told you that, okay? And then you move to the, so this is also extremely important because once you have these three main, let's say domain or whatever, okay? Then obviously your contribution is come, is going to come by yourself. Me, I'm going to contribute to this, you know, and I'm going to check if I'm online in line with what this guy told you, or if I can find something else. So this is, I would say uh, something which is important for me is the literature review. It's becoming more and more rare to have good literature reviews, which means sometimes I get a paper accepted uh, because I think, yeah, this, this, uh, this literature review have helped me to understand what at stake. And then you have your contribution, but this is very, very uh, important. So really think about a literature review, which is really focused on your subject. And once again, with this structure in a way that your reader, okay, is perfectly going to understand that you're going to focus on this aspect and then he will forget about all the limitations. You know, if you don't do that, then when he will look at your own research, they will always stress one thematic you didn't cover. Okay, so it's always to convince the reader that 
you are not going to talk about something not because you didn't know about it, because you made a choice of not doing it. And this is not at, at the end. Uh, second thing I, I want also, and I, because I feel that this is coming more and more on, um, in the academia, uh, there was a tradition 20 years ago, I would say, when you look at the article, where you would have an introduction would be very general. You know, you would talk about uh, um, climate change is important. We need to make sure that it's not going to have a global warming and so on. Okay. Now, and this introduction was one or two pages. Now, a lot of journals, also because it helps the reader, it helps the referees, will ask you, I would say, to remove almost everything which is not specific to your research. Which means, this is something uh, we, we heard quite sometimes now, that any paper which starts with shipping is important, shipping is good, people tend to, okay, again and again and again. It means that if you're issue about something, it means later on you can go back to the more general things. But it means after the, usually the second paragraph, it should al already be about your contribution. It should be already about the question. We know that this is happening. We know that this is uh, happening this way. And then paragraph number two, but what about that? When we look at it, nobody really look, you know? And then you get the appetite for the, you know? So once again, it, it's important. It's about writing, about structuring your thought but it needs to be more and more, you know, target about who I'm talking to, where is my contribution, this is something. And when, when you look at it, I would say, at least on my side, when I look at paper that could be rejected or revision or uh, that I can reject, very often it's, it comes in back always to that. Your contribution is not clear enough. It took me too much effort to understand what you wanted to, you know, contribute. And one reason usually is because I had to read three pages before reaching, I'm going to do that. Okay. And we, we, we don't want, I mean, from the abstract, from the title, from the first three paragraphs, you should know, okay, this is what I can expect in this article. Okay. May I ask a question? May I interrupt? Of yes, of course. I have two questions. First, at this part, so the aim of what I need to do or what I want to contribute has to be very clear in abstract and introduction. Yeah. So that's the second paragraph, correct? Yeah. So in abstract, it's about, uh, here each journal is a little specific, but the abstract is mostly about, uh, I'm going to tell you about that. I'm going to uh, do it this way and this is what I'm going to conclude. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, for me, what works the best is when I think about uh, writing introduction is very quickly, this is the topic, but when you think about the topic, there is something which has never been, you know, I say it's not that has never been, but there is a question, which is still open. Yeah, that's my second question. <laughs> yeah, so you know it's not exactly the same structure, but yeah, because, what, because my, point, yeah. my yes. point is don't take three pages to go to what your contribution is about. Mm. As much as, which means that, that's what I mean. It means even the first paragraph should already be about your subject. No? Okay. It should already target your subject. If you want later on, you can go into more general things in the literature review. You no? Know? But it should be already very, very specific on what you want to, uh, uh, to write your paper about. Okay, that leads us to the second question where, where there is always a dilemma between not writing that uh, this topic is new and that nobody else has written about it. And at the same time to highlight the new contribution and that there is a, a part that is really novel as you were explaining with the hurricane impact on mm. uh, the port. Um, and and that, that's what journals are looking for, something novel, something original. At, at the same time, not writing that it's that there is scarcity in literature and that mm. people haven't written about it before so much. Mm. So how we do we do this? <laughs> uh, that, that's why that's why I spent a lot of time thinking before. Mm. Me me a tactic uh, something I do often, and 
that can be appropriate for some subjects mm -hmm. is I take things that people take for granted. Mm -hmm. Which means I say, okay, everybody say that, okay, this, this is the way it is, this is the way it should be. But you, you know, I mean, if you make an applied paper, mm -hmm. for me, an entry point could be, in general, we know that this is, you know, I'm not challenging, you know, the, the main frame because people have been thinking about that. But this is what we know about the subject. Mm -hmm. But does it work for Egypt? Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not saying I'm going to do something uh, new because um, because that it has never been applied to Egypt. I'm saying, okay, is this general, you know, thinking mm -hmm. is because I have a case study on uh, Egypt or uh, wherever, but is it true? Can we really say that it's true everywhere? And I'm going to, to, to look at that. And why is it important? Because if it's not true, it means that what's the main conclusion from most you know, people on this subject um, should not be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's really a way to, to phrase it, I would say, we are still talking about the same thing, the methods, the articles, the contribution, you say, but it's more, once again, the way you're going to, to put it, you know. I'm not going to, uh, because referee, we are, most of us in our uh, comfort zone, okay? And you don't, you don't like to be challenged and you don't like to be challenged. Once again, I'm not telling you that in following what I'm telling you, you're going to have the Nobel Prize. Because there's one point, you know, well, maybe you're going to challenge, you know, everything, okay? But I, I would say when, when, I, when I take some of, uh, uh, I'm going to give you two examples, two articles which I consider has been uh, uh, providing the more contribution, the, more, the highest impact, okay, in research. Uh, first one was after my PhD was about uh, liner shipping strategies. So I don't know if everybody is familiar with the maritime transportation. I guess you are. And uh, the end of my thesis was about that to say it was in 2000, all the, the shipping line, they were going into dedicated terminals. Uh, I'm sure Sandra, you remember, probably mentioned that in some of my classes. And it was simple. It was say, okay, but everybody agreed it's something great, but is, is that so great? Can we find some that say that it's not so obvious that it's going to be something great, especially when I think about a country? So you see, it's a very simple idea, but of course, to, to reach this level of uh, simplicity, mm -hmm. okay, uh, it's, it takes a lot of work. My, my, my promoter, who is a, a, a very big professor in France, and in, was always telling me, if you're not able to tell me in two sentences, what's your contribution, you need to work more. It, it should not be, you know, so you take simple things and you try to make them bigger, okay? okay. The, the, the other main contribution is paper in 2010 about this paper about slow steaming. In a way, doesn't matter, subject is technical, okay? But what, what, what was my contribution in this paper is about the, uh, I didn't know at this time, just now I look back, you know, you're not doing everything just thinking about if I do that, you know, just when I, I look back, why, why was this article, uh, I mean, successful? I got something like 300 citation on one article, it start to be in our field, pretty, uh, pretty okay, I would say, pretty good. Uh, the, the thing is that this one was a little simple is that in economics management, people start to, to talk a lot about the fact that if you reduce the speed, there is, you know, you're going to consume less fuel, and then you're going to emit less carbon. Mm -hmm. okay? And for an economist like me, okay, uh, to understand this relationship between speed and fuel consumption, and how to make the calculation, mm -hmm. now it's standard, but 20 years ago or 15 years, it was not easy. So what, what I did actually is that I spent, I was at WMU with a, uh, Takashi, uh, don't yeah. you remember, uh, remember. Uh, Japanese colleagues with uh, with some uh, Korean colleagues, 
And I say, okay, I'm an economist. I don't know anything about it. Explain me so I can understand. And I'm going to put that in a paper, which is not a naval architect, no, but a paper for business. So right. people in the business can understand easily how to, how does it work and how can I use it? So it's a cubic function. I try to make it simple. Uh, that, that's, that works too, you know? So you, you bring something in a new audience that can be relevant, but you make it simple. Okay. I have plenty of articles where it didn't work. Some articles, sometimes you think it's going to be a hit. I wrote and you publish and uh, I went to, that's always a dilemma, you know? I went into uh, uh, this International Journal of Production Economics, which is a very good journal. I did some uh, paper in International Journal of Production Research, some very good uh, OR, you know, operational research with some colleagues. Impact zero. No? <laughs> That's, uh, you know, I learned from it, but so it, it's really, really sometimes there's a uh, luck, you know, but, but I would say, just a few words and then I'll leave it open for, for question. Huh? Uh, it's a technique. There is a lot, it's a method. You know, it doesn't come, you have to follow. It can be my advice is advice from your supervisor, from some colleagues. Then you take, but it's it's not enough to be smart, you know, to be clever, to have the best model. It's not enough. There is an, uh, a method, you know, some that you can use when it comes to write. And you need to follow these uh, uh, these uh, steps. This is also true when you get the referee. This is also another start, and that's also a tough one. You get your paper. Now, okay, major revisions. How to deal with that? How to answer? And here, once again, this is a lot from experience. So this is where you. Uh, uh, you have interest in teaming, teaming up with other colleagues, okay? Where, for instance, there's some basic rules. Even if it's sometimes doesn't make sense, never argue with a referee. You have way to tell him, okay, that you don't understand what he wants to say <laughs> and that you're not going to consider it. But you should never say, I'm not going to consider it. You should say, I made the effort, I look into it, I'm going to, re to sometimes to write, uh, I don't know, one page about it, but I was not able to take that into consideration, but I put a note in the article to say that's probably something to consider in the future, okay? So it's it just, okay, it's too much energy to argue. Even sometimes it's painful because you just want to say, okay, it doesn't make any sense, but you're not going to win this battle because it's very rare that the editor is going to go against uh, the referees. Why? Because once again, it's free time. We do it, we do that uh, for free. So there is also a, a process there, okay, uh, to follow. So maybe we can talk about it if you, if you want. We, we, uh, I think it, it's it be about time to maybe to take a question. But my, my main takeaway, once again, is know yourself and know who you, you know, addressing. Which means, uh, if you are not, I'm not an econometrician, it's obviously I will never go to econometrica. I will never go to pure methodological journal. I will not, no, it's not me. And even if it's a high rank, it's not me. You need to know your strength. Okay. And it's okay. But also you need, even within the journal, there is still a very long list of journals you can find. But it's also once with this first step, know who you want to address. Do you really, it's always other academia, but I would say once again, method academic, you know, are going to give you some tools that you can use in the classroom, in your research. Or I'm going to give you more some solutions that are going to help you to think about, you know, a future research for yourself. Main tips also, of course, the quality of the manuscript. 
there are also, and uh, I would say, I'm, I'm not sure I'm one of them, but some, some referees can be uh, mean, which means I have some colleagues, once again, who are also, because they have to review a lot of papers, the first thing is to look at the abstract, go quickly through the article, and as soon as they see something that they can base re rejection, okay, it's done. They know they have to find reason to find to reject the paper. So it means that you have to also to be careful about the layout of the paper, the quality, the writing. All this, you know, uh, you, you should limit, you know you're going to be criticized, but you should also think as much possible to limit the reason why your paper and it means what? It means that sometimes there is two things. It's like for a PhD. You need to know when to stop. Your paper is never going to be perfect. There is no paper which is perfect. That's, that's why we have a review process. Okay. But it means also that, and, and that's uh, even more at the beginning, that you need to be very focused. Don't repeat yourself. Even if the article, there is nothing it's never nice to read somewhere where it's two, three or four times the same thing which is repeated. Okay, so you really need to be focused. As I say, you start right away on your subject. Okay, you 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 follow this line. Uh, if you want to do some more general things, you leave that for the conclusion if you want to. Okay, but once again, be focused because we uh, want to uh, have no effort, you know, in reading it. So it means that as soon as something which is not on the subject, it's like, oh, why, why, why is it talk, Why is she talking? Why is he talking about that? And then it's not a, a good impression. But it takes, a, yeah, it takes a lot of time. A lot of time. Writing is a is a, a big part of the research, apart from it, obviously doing the research. So these are quite few ideas now. But I wanted to uh, to share with you when I was thinking about okay how does it work, what is the process, quarters. Uh, every day I make some mistakes. Every day I invite some quarters I should not have. Yeah, there is a tendency also to uh, to think oh I'm going to uh, get in contact with this uh, other researcher because he's a big name or because you know because I, I like what and uh, sometimes it works but sometimes it just I just uh, lost many papers because of that. I was always hoping that some somebody was going to, you know, then should not be mad about them, just uh, bad timing, very often. But you need to try, and that's why you we miss so much the conferences, because how to know the quarter? But it's through conferences. It's through the coffee machine, you know? <laughs> but you get somebody, you have a good vibe, you, very often it's, uh, that's something which is, uh, extremely important you know? yeah but networking now is hard given the COVID situation and very hard no i agree but we can hope it will uh restart again but it's true it's extremely hard so if you cannot do networking me what 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 i did and lately you see even when i you know i got some big uh, call names you know colleagues uh, uh so uh, so then when i reach out you know is for instance uh, I think about themselves too. They are also busy. You have other projects. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, no, no problem about that. But for instance, uh, due to this lack of networking, what I did during the last couple of years now is also there's sometimes a paper where you feel that like you did four, I mean, you did 70% of the paper. And you feel that you will never get, you know, the last 30% which means that these 30% are also very important because you will get the desk reject. So what I did a couple of times, I target somebody, I know it's in his field, you know, I know it's, uh, I think about Theo Notteboom, people like that, but I know pretty well, you know, but I'm more or less, I send, you know, 80% of the paper and I just call for them, you know, you leave them also things to do because other authors, they don't like to contribute if they don't do anything. But I would say it's fine, you know, I did 60%, I send it, okay, look at this paper, what, how, what do you feel about it, okay? So then they might tell you, oh, you should do that, okay, but now that you read it, why don't you do it with me? Okay, okay? and then people say, okay, 
it's a nice paper. And you know it's, of course, it's a value for them, but you know that without that, you, you, you're stuck, you know. You, you, can't, uh, you can't do better. Okay. What about the hot topics now that uh, are in the logistics and maritime field and that are really um, uh, attractive for editors to accept? If, uh, so then there is a, uh, that's a, a very good uh, question because it's always, uh, you know, in between saying if I go too uh, hot about uh, COVID, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, that okay, now they are reviewing paper has been submitting one year ago. So if I enter there, okay. Uh, I would say it's still good. At the, at the beginning, I was not so much into um, into selecting hot topics. Okay. You, you always uh, feel like, uh, oh, I'm not going to talk about COVID. Everybody's doing it. So it's uh, nothing to, uh, mm -hmm. but actually it's, it's, it's still nice because it's, it's helps you to, you know, to better explain your contribution. I mean, now it's, it's easy to, uh, to uh, relate everything to COVID, everything to, uh, once again, if, if your article is not about the COVID, okay, you should not mention COVID, but resilience of uh, supply chain. That's, that's something which, I mean, which is there, and there are plenty of examples that show that why is it important? So at the same time, why not putting it, you know, into this, uh, but, but once again, be careful. If you, you start with that, um, don't, uh, don't start with two pages about it. Start with the first paragraph, and then within that, you start with my contribution. Okay. Due to COVID, we realized that, I don't know, resilience of supply chain are more and more important. Mm -hmm. The literature is telling you that in general, but what about this, you know? Is it true everywhere? Is it true, you know? So you, you, you frame it, uh, you know? This way, and, and I think this is this first. I would say this first part is very important because then your literature review will be structured about that. Then you can justify that uh, you will talk about this author, this author, this author. I see. I think so. so I guess it's not too uh, obvious for most of you. Some things may may seem a little basic, but I, I just you know sharing, and and sometimes it's it's nice for me also to do this. Uh, I do it time to time about publishing research because each time I, I, I wrote, I thought about it yesterday evening, you know, <laughs> I thought about what I could share with you. And, uh, and I think sometimes, yeah, I don't, I don't follow my own, you know, tips, you know, <laughs> and maybe it make me think about some articles which are, you know, in review and sometimes I say, oh, I don't, why don't you don't do what you suppose, what you tell other people to do, but everybody found, found his way, but uh, once again, it's still some, some basic, which is, uh, writing is an art. It's it's extremely important. It's it's hard sometimes. Okay. I don't know if uh, my colleagues have questions, or maybe everything is uh, clear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I hope I hope I will see uh, in one year time if I get a thousand of publication from <laughs> from your group. We hope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this is a, is a hot topic now because yes, everybody is uh, is trying, and as you said, it's our career and it's a requirement for yeah. promotion and also for accreditations. Like we're applying for different accreditations, so the, we also have to be qualified in terms of publications and research uh, to be, um, uh, I mean, um, uh, accredited to get accredited. Mm. But a, a good tactic too, but I didn't mention is uh, at, at one point I mentioned the fact that when you have one main topic, at the beginning, you mostly focused on one topic. Okay. Think about economies of scales, which means try to get a, what we call a pipeline of at least two, three articles. Okay. Probably not more because it takes a lot of time, but always work. For me, to, I always work on two, three, four articles at the same time. Why? Because first, it removes the pressure, you know, because if you focus too much on one article, if the paper is rejected, then you are you down for a week, you know. Mm. So it's always good to try to have a, what we call a, a pipeline, you know. And then because you rely so much on quarters and all quarters, they have also their own, you know, uh, timing. 
So sometimes you started something with a co-author and then the, is a, a teaching, you know, period for him. So he's not going to touch the paper for two months and then you stuck. Okay. So you, you have also to think about that. Because mm -hmm. once again, it's, it's nice to have a paper which is in a revision, another one which is submission, another one you're working on. You work in parallel. And once again, because it will help you. If you put too much on one article, uh, it's going to be so frustrating. If you uh, get the paper, uh, you're going to be fo so frustrated that it's uh, it's hard to take. Yeah, but then the contribution has to be really strong so that you can have more than one paper on the same contribution from different perspectives. Uh, or you uh, or you write for different uh, audiences. Different okay. Topics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. I, I mean, when you think about uh, uh, data collection, that's something also important. Very often we, we use, you know, uh, we use uh, different data, you know, data set or whatever for your, but I think about if you really want to invest sometimes in, in one type of uh, data, okay, you know, it's going to take a lot of time. So from the beginning, think about your data, say this, I can use it to look at, I'm going to give you an example. Right now I'm, I'm working with a, a project where I get data on a, a Walmart in the US. You know, Walmart uh, trade flows going to the U.S. port. Okay. And I have two projects, okay? One is with uh, Theo Notebu, where we look at how did the COVID, you know, uh, had an impact about the flows. Are the port going through uh, West Coast, East Port of the U.S., okay? And on the same data, okay, on which I've been loved, time to build the, I've got another project, which is about carbon emission. What is the carbon emission from Nike and Walmart? Okay. So I've got two projects. Uh, one project, that's what I, I do very often. One project is just by myself, carbon emissions. And the other one is with a, a co-author. When the co-author doesn't have time to work, okay, I work on my, my, my side. Okay. But, you, and, and because the, uh, once again, it takes so much time to know about the literature to, uh, so really think about, you know, if, if you have only one idea about one paper, it's not enough. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a very good tip. Yes. Because uh, even literature, you can do the, the reading and everything once, and then you can do more than one perspective with the same uh, exactly. knowledge you have gained from reading all these uh, papers. Yeah. Cause it takes so much time. I mean, you need to, uh, yeah to manage that as, a, as I say, economies of scale, you know, yes. need to get different, uh, it's, it's too difficult to, uh, I mean, as a lead author, because here I'm talking about the case where you are the one to look at the literature and then you can also have, you know, uh, other project when you're not the lead author and then you can have a more technical contribution. Will you share with us the good journals uh, that uh, you recommend? And uh, if you know about the, the acceptance time spam, the process of reviewing and so on, and you can give us some tips of which ones um, um, are more attractive for type of like more practical, more methodology, as you said, mm -hmm. and their uh, acceptance uh, spam, that would be very beneficial to us to please. So for, for the list, I think I wanted to share, but uh, I use, uh, I think we already uh, uh, talked about that, the same list than yours, which is a former ABS, American uh, Business School, you know, ranking, yeah. uh, English uh, yes. uh, Business School. So I, I guess you, you have it too. I think you, you use it too. Yes, we use it, but we focus more on, on the, um, the two databases of Scopus and Web of Science. I mean, the indexes of Scopus and Web of Science are the most important. Like sometimes ABS has a, a good rank, but they are not indexed in Clarivate, for example, yeah. Web of Science. That's not uh, very recommended here. They look more for Q's journal of Web of Science and and, Clariv and uh, Scopus. Here, here my, my thing has always been the same. First, okay. Uh, and my school, we use four ranks, rankings, you know? which is, I think, something which is very smart, which means we, we use a former uh, ABS, we use a French classification of journal, we use the impact factor, yeah. you know, 
and uh, we use an average ranking. Okay, and what we do is we say uh, if you have a journal which is in the top ranking in two out of these four, it's a top journal. So my my idea is if okay, first you look at what your school is using because that's you know, and you look at these top rankings as I mentioned before, and once again. Uh, the best journal, usually they are in every ranking, they are the best journals. You have some differences, but but it can change so so quickly. But I don't rely too much on that, actually, to tell the truth. I mean, uh, there is sometimes where I've lost so much time to try to get a paper published in a journal when it was not supposed to be there. At the end, I just dropped the paper because I was tired to finding ways. So it's really, once again, you remember the advice I gave you? You have your list, okay? Then you have to decide. For some paper, if your objective is to get in this journal, look at the journal, look at what they're talking about, and contribute to what they are talking about. And if you want to try to get the quarters, take his domain, you know, take his methodology. I hate this kind of, but it works actually. Uh, people were telling me in the US, okay. Don't challenge him, just give him an easy additional publication. That's a tactic, but I think it's important. It's also important because you're learning. It's not only a tactic, you're learning from it. Okay. And then the, the list of, of journals, I think I send you one, but there are, there are thousands. And they are still the same. I, I'm not, uh, maybe some other will tell you something else, but I, uh, maybe because I'm older, but I start to get away from the publication. I know the, the good journals. And you can find them easy. Yeah. I think there was another question. Was a uh... no? I forgot. And I think you mentioned two questions about the the good journal. Yeah. I uh, the 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 time span of acceptance. Which ones have? Uh... Uh, this, this is interesting. Uh, this it's true, but still today I'm very surprised about the the time it takes to get the reviews and so. Uh, there is. On Science Direct, you can you know the Journal Finder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. And but on on El El Elsevier. Yes. You no. Know, when you go on Journal Finder, very often they will tell you, you know, uh, the time average time for reviews and rejection. Mm -hmm. So this is something which is a uh, me. I know there is some journal like transport policy, they are very long to give reviews, which I don't understand, okay? But my my uh, recommendation, if, if you really focus on that, is target some uh, journal in Elsevier. Because they put a very big pressure on the editor to make sure that they are very timely. So it means that Elsevier, usually if you target some kind of journal, if you have a doubt between two, okay? Uh, go there because uh, on average it's around one or two months to get the reviews. Okay. Okay. That's it. Uh, excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Uh, concerning uh, writing the literature review, hmm. is it a good idea to write it in a form of a table so that I won't waste time writing who said this, this uh, said this, and who said that? Uh, and at the same time, I can show that I write enough about my topic, and at the end of the of the of the article, I can match what I have read with the results. Is it a good idea to write it in the form of a table? If it, I would say a table, I would put that as a table. If you uh, your paper is more literature review, you know, you know there are some some articles which are mostly literature Ooh. review. What has been said about a topic. Uh, when it's an article which is about, a, I don't know, a more specific topic, I would not recommend. I really recommend to uh, uh, to look at, what the, the way I do the literature review for mm -hmm. a couple of years now is um, I've got my topic, obviously like everybody has search, you know, mm -hmm. then from one to another, the good thing usually you start with something very uh, uh, new, you know, because there is also literature review. So I, I get, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 articles. But once again, you need to take 15, which are really spot on your question, okay? No general, you know, really 
focusing on your as much as possible. And I think if it's really focused, uh, spot on your question, you should not get more than 10, 15. You know, something which is really in line with what you want to do. Okay. Then I, I look at them. The way I've got a word file, <laughs> give you my, and uh, I don't write. I I read the articles, most of it, and then I copy and paste the idea I find interesting. You know, what they say, the conclusion, what uh, ah this is interesting. So I've got a, a, a summary of one page for each article, okay, mm -hmm. and then I go back to these ten, probably ten pages I have. You know, so so far I didn't write anything. Huh? Uh -huh. And I start to build uh, my literature review about what do I get from it. Okay, which means uh, I get that uh, what's important is uh, to talk about this. Okay, the way to do it, this article did it this way, the other article did it this way, and I built my literature review uh, this way actually. Okay. Okay, got it. Yes. So, so I don't go deep. I really go into ten articles, and then just looking back at the ten articles, I think about what do I get from it, and this is what I'm going to tell to the reader. I'm going to save him, you know, one week of work, you know, and I'm going to help him to say, okay, this is what you can get if you read the, the article. Okay, so it's not it's not uh, um, important to show all what I have read and uh, who no. said that in in a table, for example, or no. okay, just my point of view. Ex by your yeah, it, it has to be uh, your 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 conclusion from what you read. I think. Okay, okay thank you. Because it, it's as I said before, I don't know. Maybe you you might tell me some uh, here have some experience too. But it's not what we want to read. We don't want to read this one says that, this one says that. I want to read what what I should know, you know about this topic, which, what has been said. So, and now about how they did it and, uh, and so on. Yeah, but if the paper is mainly a literature review paper, then here uh, we can put the, the tables yeah. and the relationships, contributions of the papers, exactly. perspectives, and so on. Yeah, because exactly. Well, well I still, if it's a literature review, because this is really very fun, the first step of a PhD. You mm -hmm. need to have a first paper, which is a literature review. This mm -hmm. is something different. Here, I want it to be comprehensive. Okay? But when I do a, a literature review, like that, the paper, which is more a, a literature review, uh, you still need to organize, and that's not easy, because you want to have as much as possible. So then you end with 70 paper references, but you still need to uh, have a way to structure this. Yeah. And, and then you go into more details about how they did it. But okay. this is where I make the distinction between a paper, which is a, a literature review, mm -hmm. what has been said, mm -hmm. how they did it, and what I get from it, okay? from a more, I would say, traditional article where it's about one specific topic and on this topic, what do we know? And then there is a name, who said, but what's more important is what, what do we know about, about uh, you know? Mm. Yeah, and a very good tip you're saying, Professor, that it, literature is not about, it's not about listing and no. it's also not about my opinion. But yeah. it's about how to analyze what different people said yeah. to so that I can continue my research from this point. Exactly. It's to find the contradiction. Yeah. There is a consensus from this author on this, but then on this other aspect, it's not so clear. And then on the other one, okay, we don't know yet. But either I, I can confirm what was said in a specific context, or I can say there is a contradiction which is different to say there is nothing, no, very, we're not clear. So I'm going to try to give an answer to contribute to this thing, or the last part, I'm going to explore a new domain. Explore a new domain, it's more difficult. Okay. Because then you go back to my idea to say, oh, but maybe because you don't know enough or, you know, mm -hmm. but I would say already, can I confirm what everybody agrees on? Is it so clear? Or 
here there is a conversation okay. of contradiction, and I'm going to contribute to this to help to understand this question. Okay, it could be a contradiction or a direction where people say it's important, no. correct? No. And and I want to build on it in a specific. No. So this is how we tackle it when there is no much no. Uh, written about it. No, exactly. Okay, okay, that's very good because uh, many of our colleagues here are PhD students and they will have more than one paper from their PhDs. Yeah, so they, now they, they can they have, think. yeah, they can have their literature paper with the structure you mentioned and yeah. then the paper where it reflects the analysis and the contribution uh, to be written in a different uh, yeah. structure. Mm. Okay, any more questions, colleagues? Well, I guess it was really beneficial to, uh -huh. to juniors and seniors, not only to, to juniors. And um, we hope you have time for more. <laughs> we don't uh, know. I would be very happy. Maybe next time to uh, uh, never. We will have, have a, we will have like a, a small survey asking them if we, which of the uh, the topics we discussed today they would like to yeah. um, have a further discussion on. And if you have time, we would really be very glad to have you again. Uh, really, thank you. It was a great uh, seminar, and uh, it, it was very beneficial to us. Okay. Very happy. I uh, hope to uh, uh, to see you all soon. And yeah. uh, Sandra, obviously, <laughs> will be my pleasure with my family. And maybe next time over there, we are all hoping for that to uh, reopen. Yeah, yeah. We the, the invitation is extended from now to have you here, your family and you, and uh, we're very welcome in Egypt. And of course, if we come to France, we will contact. We will be okay. with great pleasure. Yes. All right. So take very care, good. all of you. And uh, if you have any question, obviously, you, uh, you just uh, drop me okay. an email. I will share your email as well. So yep. if uh, they have a question, or I can gather the questions and send them to you. Yeah. Okay. But I, if, I, if I say mean things, it's not because I'm mean, you know, it's to help. Forget about <laughs> Don't forget about that, you know. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Well. Thank you. Bye. Bye.